In this video, I'll first do a little painting of a hydrangea petal cluster to demonstrate some of the techniques discussed in the previous videos. First a sketch. Then pick the wash clean edge no variation brush. Then with the color selected, quinacridone magenta in this case, I'll carefully paint the top petal. As you can see, this brush gives a very flat wash with clean, sharp edges. I'll turn off the sketch to show this. Now I'll put an edge around the petal by using the Make Edges action. I set the edge layer to 100% and zoom in so you can see the edge clearly. I'll pick a smudge brush to remove edges I don't want, in this case where the middle petal overlaps the top petal, and remove the sketch to see the result. I now lock the edge layer so I don't paint on it by mistake. And I'll put the edge and paint layer into a group I call top petal. I now use the first paint layer to create a mask to make it easier for the next steps, that is, to build up the petal. Control click or um, on the Mac, I think it's command click, on the watercolor layer icon. This selects the visible or non-transparent pixels. Because the paint is very thin, we get a message saying that less than 50% pixels have been selected. That's okay. Now click on the Add Layer Mask icon after having selected the top petal group. This will add a mask to the group. Now Alt click on the mask to display it. As you can see, we have a grey version of the petal. However, we want it to be white because white on a layer mask is like an open window through which you can see the group contents whereas black is like a solid wall and grey is like a window with opaque glass. To make the mask petal selection white, pick the levels adjustment and bring the rightmost slider all the way to the left. Now we have a perfect selection. If needed, you can pick the mask brush hard and paint with white or black as required to clean up the mask, so that all we are left with is a white version of the petal. Normally there would be no need to do this, as we rarely need to be so precise in watercolor painting. I'll now demonstrate the effect of the mask by painting over the watercolor layer. As you can see, the mask restricts the paint to the petal. I'll now start to build up the petal on a new layer, or new layers rather, using the Wash Squirrel Soft Brush. The process is to put some paint down, sponge if necessary, make a new layer, and repeat the process until we're satisfied with the result. I'll now add some veins to the petal using the dry rigger. By the way, you may find that the brushes you've downloaded have slightly different names, as I try in your releases of the tools to use more meaningful names and to organize the tools better. 
Of course I will need to adjust the opacity and size of the brush. I now merge the layers by using the Merge Layers action. Now that I'm back to a single layer, I can remove some paint and do a bit of smudging before repeating the process for the other petals. I will now paint the base layer for the remaining petals. Here they are. I now build up the other petals and the bud. All the layers are identical, in a group with an edge layer and a watercolor layer. This has been collapsed from multiple layers, of course. The bud group doesn't have a mask, as there was no need, and I also wanted the paint to blend with the petals. I will put all the layers into a group, and use a little Photoshop trick to quickly give more tonal depth to the painting. After having saved the group, in case I need to go back to it, I will flatten it. Then I duplicate the layer and set the mode of both layers back to multiply. Flattening the groups sets the layer mode to normal, which is not correct for watercolor painting. I'll then adjust the opacity to suit. The effect is as if I had painted the whole flower all over again on a new layer. I'll merge the two layers and apply sharpening with a high radius value and low amount. This adds local contrast. To finish off, I'll pick the wet on dry thick and thin jewel brush, pick a color and adjust the size and opacity to paint the twig on a new layer as usual. I'll apply some edges to the twig using the Make Edges action to give it some more definition. And to finish off, I'll merge the layers. I stop at this point. Of course there is a lot more we could do. Soften the edges, add color, add shadows, put in a background and so on. But for demo purposes I think this is enough. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful.